Hi there! Welcome back to Synchro Secrets, the go-to place for all things artistic swimming. If you are new here, my name is Agata and I am a professional artistic swimming coach and a content creator. Today I will be exploring how artistic swimming routines are judged according to the new rules. Whether you are an athlete, a parent, an artistic swimming fan or a coach, in this video you will learn what the judges are looking at when scoring those beautiful artistic swimming routines. But before I start, I wanted to remind you to hit that subscribe button so you never miss any of my videos. First, let's talk about the basics. Artistic swimming, formerly known as synchronized swimming, is a combination of dance, ballet, swimming and gymnastics, all happening in the water and synchronized as well. This sport requires flexibility, sharpness, strength, precision and good timing, and creativity and musicality. Artistic swimming routines are the artistic expression of the discipline. A routine is a choreographed swam to music performed in the water. In routines, athletes demonstrate the mastery in skills combining techniques to create movements that match with the selected music. But how exactly the judges score these routines? Firstly, it is important to say that the routines are made of elements and transitions. Elements include hybrids, so what the athletes do with their legs and their head under the water, acrobatics, all lifts, throws, platforms and stacks that you can observe in synchro routine, and technical required elements, which are precisely described combinations of positions and transitions to be performed by all athletes in technical routines only. As I already mentioned before, in the routines we also have transitions that are the linking actions between the elements, including propulsion techniques, strokes, ballet leg combinations, flexibility surface actions, surface pattern changes, or pair assisted actions. Scoring in artistic swimming is divided into three different categories. Difficulty and synchronization, elements, and artistic impression. Each of these categories has specific criteria that judges use to evaluate their routines. Let's start with difficulty and synchronization. It is important to mention that within the new rules, the difficulty of the routine should be declared by the coaches before the competition. The coaches should submit the coaches' card documents stating all hybrids, transitions, acrobatic movements, and technical elements in the order of the occurrence in the routine. Three, difficulty technical controllers are comparing what the coaches stated in the coach card before the competition to what athletes are doing during the competition. In the free routines, they need to assess the number, order of elements and the difficulty of the performed elements by the athletes. In the technical routines, they also need to check the order and pre-declared difficulty of the technical elements. If the difficulty controllers spot any mistake or that the coach card was filled out wrong, so for example, if the coach card was filled out by the coach and the athlete did not perform what was declared, then the whole hybrid will go to the 0.5 points. This also applies to acrobatic movements. This is a big deduction looking at that some countries declare just one hybrid at the difficulty of 10 points. The difficulty of transitions is not declared or checked, as transitions are the part of the artistic impression score. So we discussed and covered what the difficulty judges do, but there are also free synchronization technical controllers, and they observe and record the number and type of synchronization errors. Synchronization technical controllers will register the number and magnitude of unequal actions in all routines, except of solo events because there is no one to be synchronized with. There can be three different types of errors that the synchronization technical controllers can register, small, obvious, and major. If you are interested of what the technical controllers do in more details, make sure you comment under this video and I will try to cover it in the next one. All right, so let's move on to the elements panel. This panel consists of five judges and they each award one score for each element performed in the routine. So the one score can go for one hybrid Second score can go for acrobatic movement, and so on, so on, so on. This does not apply to transitions. Transitions are scored by the artistic impression panel judges, which we are going to cover a little bit later in this video. It is important to mention that execution is the level of excellence demonstrated through the athlete's mastery of highly specialized skills. Execution is how well the athlete performs the elements they chose to perform. 
When the judges are scoring the elements, they need to consider the execution of hybrids, in which they need to take into consideration the design, which means that the hybrids should clearly show the intended action or a position, whether it is vertically tilted, arched, bent, or in a split, or in an angle, or twisting, spinning, or traveling. The next factor is control. And the control is built of few factors. Factor number one is height, and here you can see the height diagram that is considered when scoring a vertical position or a dynamic thrust out of the water. Factor number two is the extension, which is the range to which something can be stretched to its fullest length. In this case, it is the use of the muscular strength to bring the joint to its maximum psychological extension function. In hybrids, the knees, ankles, feet, and toes should always be fully extended with no relaxation of extension during any part of the execution, unless intended otherwise in the choreography. And the last factor considered is stability, which means solid positions that are unaffected by movement, attained position exactly without correction, and fluidity without evidence of strain. All right, so this was just a quick summary of what the element judges have to consider when judging hybrids. But we also have other elements in the routines that the elements judges need to take into the consideration, for example, the acrobatic movements, in which, again, they consider the height out of the water, they consider clearly defined action, that means that the acrobatics must be clear and easily recognizable. It has to be shown long enough to be understood and displaying a definite completion or finishing of the action. Next factor that should be considered is stability in achieving and maintaining positions. So there should not be any falling off, loss of balance or instability of the support or the featured swimmer. And the stability of the construction should be considered as well. And the last factor considered in the acrobatic movements is the minimal setup and recovery time, which means that a minimal time should be given to the setup and the recovery time after the completion of the acrobatic action. All right, so we covered the acrobatic movements, but the judges still have two things to consider when judging elements, and the first of them is the pair acro, in which judges need to evaluate a general impression of the acrobatic movement based on the main control factors of the future swimmer, the height, clarity, angles, and extension. Judges must also evaluate design, stability, and sustainability of the entire acrobatic movement, including the base swimmer and the future swimmer, and the way they interact. Judges are looking for a clear water entry and pay attention to the unintentional falls, push problems, and other execution issues. Last but not least, we will look at the element scoring for the technical required elements. Now, when judging the technical required elements, the judges must follow judging guidelines as for figures, which can be found in the World Aquatics document. Judges in Elements Panel must focus on the accuracy of design in positions, transitions, and speed requirements, along with control factors, and they need to deliver a score for each technical required element. I think it is important to mention here that if any part of the technical required element is omitted, or just doesn't fit to the definition of this element, then the difficulty technical controllers will give a zero for this element and not the element judges. And so far, we discussed two out of three judges panels. We discussed the technical controllers and we discussed the element judges, but we still have the artistic impression panel left. And here it is important to mention that the artistic impression panel consists of five judges, which have to give three different scores for each routine. And there should be one score for choreography and musicality, that means the creative skill of composing a routine that combines artistic and technical components, but also the design and weaving together of variety, creativity, and innovation of all movements, elements, and transitions. The pool coverage, expression of the mood of the music, the use of the music structure, and the synchronization of movements with the music. There should also be one score awarded for performance. And performance is the manner in which the athletes present the routine to the viewers as well as the walk-on and the deck movements. The use of body language to express physical and emotional power, confidence and total command of the performance. And the last score should be awarded to transitions and the judges should consider the artistry and mastery of varied and purposeful movements, propulsions and stroke that link routine elements. 
In addition to those three judges panels, there is also penalties that should be considered when scoring the artistic swimming routine. Now, with the new rules, it is more clear of how many elements each swimmer, each athlete or a team should perform. So if one element is omitted, then the penalty would apply for this performance. And how much penalty should be applied can be found in the World Aquatics document. But let's give a short example. If the routine has more elements that are allowed and stated in the rules, the athletes will receive a minus two points penalty for each additional element. It is crucial for teams to be aware of these rules to avoid losing points unnecessary. So to sum it up, the artistic swimming routines are judged by difficulty and synchronization elements and artistic impression. And I think it is very important for athletes and coaches to understand those criteria to impress and get the scores as high as possible. I hope this video gave you a clear vision of how artistic swimming routines are scored. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, you subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends so we can all learn from it. If you have any questions regarding this topic or maybe you have something that you would like me to cover, make sure you leave a comment under this video. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!